Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we are checking out 50 new features and changes that iOS 12 brings to your iDevices. So sit back and let's just jump right in. First, we have the new apps which will come with iOS 12. So we have screen time, measure, voice memos, shortcuts, stocks, and books. All of these new apps have been redesigned or specifically designed for iOS 12 and bring a very good look and feel to this UI. So the Voice Memos app has received a new icon and the app itself has had a complete overhaul. It looks more modern and also the controls are a little bit more straightforward. You now have iCloud support and that is because Voice Memos has now been brought to the iPad so you can now sync Voice Memos across your devices. The Stocks app has also had an overhaul and honestly it looks really, really good. You can now view news relating to your selected stocks and the UI has actually gotten a really nice overhaul with a modern facelift which makes it a little bit more in depth for all of you who use this app. Stocks also has iCloud support so you can sync your selected stocks across all of your devices. Oh, and one more thing about the Stocks app, it's now on the iPad. So a lot of you will be happy about that. It's truly an amazing experience on the iPad with so much room for tickers, graphs, and of course that information and news relating to specific stocks. The Books app really has changed quite a bit in iOS 12. Not only the name, but the design. The design really reminds me of a Kindle, but obviously this looks way better. Everything looks like a book in the sense that there's not too much color around the app and everything looks very simple. I think that a lot of users will come to appreciate this and I hope you do too because it really is a great app to use on iOS 12. Now the measure app is completely new and this app basically allows you to use your camera as a measuring tool. So if you want to measure something, just pull out your iDevice and select two points to measure from and you will have a measurement. So far, everything for me has been extremely accurate and I've actually used this multiple times so I've had a lot of time to test it and so far, no bugs and no inaccurate measurements. Also, the leveler has been moved to this app as well just in case you were looking for that leveler. Shortcuts or Siri Shortcuts has now been redesigned from the workflow app that Apple bought not too long ago. With this app, you can now have Siri basically do a list of things with one command. So you can set up a morning routine or other very specific routines and have Siri take care of them all with one command. This can include HomeKit items being used, alarms being set, and with this if this then that integration, your options are sort of unlimited at this point in time. The last and final new app that you will find in iOS 12 is Screen Time, and this is an app that gives you two features over the use of your phone. One is control and the other is information. So with the control, you can limit your time or your child's time on the device, and you can also set limits per categories of apps as well. On the information side of things, you can get really in-depth data as to how you've been using your iDevice. So you can see spent time on apps, how many pickups you've made of your device, and also how many notifications you have been receiving. This app really goes in-depth and I think that a lot of parents and also regular users will enjoy this new feature. Screen Time also has a widget which allows you to basically get a quick look at usage without going into the menu itself. Now, when you go into a markup, you can now select more colors. And by that, I mean a ton of new colors. I think that this is an awesome way to get super artistic. And with all of the tools here, I'm sure you can really get your markups on point. You also have the ability to change the thickness of the pens or paints you are using, which allows you to have more options when drawing. You can also change opacity as well. Now in the control center, you can add the scan QR code shortcut, which will essentially take you to the camera app to read QR codes. They also have this option in the camera 3D touch menu as well, located in the control center. So it's just another way to access that feature. Now when you are in low power mode, Siri will still work. So the Hey Siri function will actually work even when in low power mode. The process of Hey Siri has obviously been streamlined to take up significantly less power now, which is why it's now an option in low power mode. Now, when going into your app switcher, you now have the ability to just swipe up on your app cards to delete them. In iOS 11, things were changed to where you had to hold on the app card and then swipe up or press on that X at the top left-hand corner of the card. Now you can just swipe up for an easier experience in the app switcher. Next up, we have grouped notifications. Now in iOS 12, you will get notifications grouped per app, so your notification center won't be as cluttered as before, and this is just a much cleaner look rather than having notifications spread all over the place. 
With that change, we also see a change to the UI for the Notification Center. Everything is slightly bigger and bolder, and we also have a redesigned Preference tab where you can manage your notifications a little bit further without going into the Settings app. The next feature will be Memoji, and Memoji is a custom Animoji that you have full control of. You can design and create a Memoji that fits your character. You can also have as many as you want. There are so many customization options that you can take advantage of, so go check it out and create some awesome Memojis to send to your friends. On that note, Memojis and Animojis now have tongue detection and wink detection, and recording has been extended to 30 seconds. Moving on, and Siri can now look up your passwords for you. She won't necessarily read them out to you, but she will take you to the keychain where you can get your password easily and be on your way. Of course, this feature is secure. It requires your voice and for your phone to be unlocked, so don't worry about any security issues. Now, let's go on to the settings app and see some changes there. In the notification menu, you now have a more expansive and in-depth UI experience to manage your notifications per app. You have a few more options here, but I think that having the icons in more detail and having a better looking UI really makes this experience easier to manage. In the software update menu, you now have the option to update your device automatically. Automatic updates are really good for those of you who always forget to update your iDevices on a regular basis. The updates will of course be installed via Wi-Fi only and will only install when your device is plugged in at night. This is a great way to keep your device up to date and secure as Apple continuously updates its security with an iOS update. In the password and or face ID menu, you now have a setting for USB accessories to be locked after 30 minutes of inactivity. This means that if you haven't unlocked your iDevice for longer than 30 minutes and you go to plug in anything into your lightning cable or lightning port, you will have to unlock your iDevice again. This is of course to prevent any brute force attacks through USB, which try to unlock your iDevice by just trying a bunch of passwords all at once. Next up in the settings app has to be the battery menu. The new UI is absolutely amazing. We are getting more data with the apps, but there are also two new graphics, which gives us way more information than we had before. You can select times and dates individually to get a better idea of when you are using the most battery and what you were doing. Also in this menu, the battery health menu has been taken out of beta and is now fully operational, showing you your battery health on your iDevice. Now in the settings app and more specifically in the podcast menu, you have more customization with the skip settings so you can change the time for those. So that's really cool. You can sort of switch things up and look for more apps having useful custom options like these in the settings app. If you go to the Safari tab in the settings app, you can now select to see favicons in Safari. So that's been a long time coming, but if you have that setting on, you can now see those icons. And I think a lot of iPad users will like this change. Moving on to the Messages app, and you now have a new way of attaching photos. On the bottom of your screen, you will now see the Photos icon, and that is how you will attach a photo. So just go ahead and tap it, select your photo, and then you can go ahead and send it, and you're all set to go. Also in the Messages app, you now have the Quick Type keyboard in the same color as the normal keyboard. This looks a lot better as there isn't that dual tone gray color going on, and it just makes the keyboard look a little bit more uniform. Now when you receive a passcode from a text message and let's say you're waiting to get the code, it now goes into your quick type bar and you can copy it directly from there to use with whatever app that requested it. So that's an easy way to do that so you don't have to remember to copy it another way. Next up is the do not disturb bedtime feature. When this feature is turned on, all notifications will of course be muted, but you will also get this really cool and nice looking lock screen here with the weather and a good morning, evening, or afternoon from Siri. Now in the weather app, you have air quality settings. So you can see the air quality and what it's like in more detail. I really think that this is a great feature as a lot of people with allergies will come to appreciate more information on the allergens in the air. So guys, those were just a few of the many changes found in iOS 12. These were really the most prominent that we found to be useful in the betas, but if you have any favorites that we listed or some that we didn't list, please write those in the comment section down below. Also join the conversation in our iOS 12 forum, link will be in the description below. So thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, don't forget to get subscribed, stay tuned for some upcoming content, and hopefully 
We'll catch you in our next video. This video is sponsored by Dim Squid. Dim Squid is a website hosting service where you can go and search for and purchase a domain for your website, and then Dim Squid will then host your website for under $4 a month, which is obviously super cheap. To make it even better for all of you tech review viewers out there, Dim Squid is offering you guys 75% off your purchase by using the offer code TECHREVIEW. So check it out and get started today with your new website hosted by Dim Squid.